Welcome to day two of week 28. Your learning intention for today is to continue to examine why and develop a model of how sexual reproduction leads to offspring with genetic variation. And so offspring could refer to simply the next generation of flowers or peas, uh, or obviously children, right? Those would be offspring. Your agenda is on the left and your work due by Thursday from day two of science is on the right. Your check-in is on slide 20. And remember to do classwork slides 23, 25, 27, and 29 for day two. There's a Jamboard assignment under week 28 in Google Classroom that we introduced on day one. And remember that your exit ticket for day two is on slide 31. Friday homework support is from 9.30 until 11.30 a.m. And remember that this week's classwork slides will count toward the digital interactive uh, science notebook category. Just a quick reminder that for day one, be sure that slides five, seven, and 14 are completed. Uh, and if you'll notice, the gray slides are the informational slides and the white slides are the slides that you have to do uh, in addition to uh, your green and blue side, green and blue slides. Okay, so just like last time, I'm going to go through uh, the, the lesson here. So slide 20 has your check-in. And so last time we were talking about the father of genetics, Gregor Mendel, and what he uh, what kind of experiments he did to pave the way for genetics. And so here we've got uh, Gregor Mendel crossing uh, and breeding plants. And so what we noticed is that if you breed purebred or uh, pure uh, purple plants with pure white plants, so if I give them genotypes, Right, this could look something like this, oops, like this, capital P, capital P, oops. And then maybe this one could look like lowercase p, lowercase p. The offspring, the offspring are all hybrid. They're all hybrid, right? So pure. This is this is this one is homozygous dominant. And then the one on the right hand side, the white one. This is homozygous recessive. Whoa. Okay. And so. And this should make sense. And this should re remind you of our mouse genetics. Remember when we crossed mice, purebred uh, mice with black fur uh, with purebred mice uh, with white fur, we got hybrid mice that were black and we put the hybrid mice in the holding cages. And when we bred the hybrid mice, that's when we got both black and white fur. And so Gregor Mendel, Notice that, and when he bred, when he crossed the hybrid flowers, that's when he saw the, the mix of traits here, right? And so we're calling this first set of uh, purebred or true breeding plants here, uh, the parental generation. And then this, what they produce, this is called the first generation or F1 and when you cross that first generation, what their offspring are called are the second generation or F2. Okay, so let's go to slide 22. More hybrid crosses. Mendel cross pollinated many hybrid crosses. He analyzed all the data and noticed all of the patterns. In the crosses between hybrid plants, with purple flowers to white flowers, the ratio was three to one. Remember how we filled out Punnett squares and there were four squares here, right? Um, in the middle for the, for the offspring. Mm, let's do, yeah, sure. No, let's do pink. Uh, we need, oh. 
right? This right here within the pink box, these are the offspring, right? And then on, on the side, you have the parents, right? These are the parent genotypes, the female parent genotype, and then the male parent genotype. And so let's go to slide 23. Ratios. A ratio is a comparison of two numbers or quantities by division. So for example, the ratio comparing 6,022 yellow seeds to 2,001 green seeds follows. So it'd be 6,022 over 2,001. And this is, if you simplify it, the ratio is three to one. Or in other words, for every three yellow seeds, there will be one green seed. So the ratio is three to one. On the right hand side, you get to practice. So a science class has 21 students, 14 girls and seven boys. Simplify the ratio. What is the ratio? Is it A, three to one, B, two to one, or C, 21 to seven? Type your answer in the box. Let's go to slide 24. Remember when traits disappeared, the hybrid offspring only had purple flowers. We, he, Gregor Mendel, hypothesized that the hybrid offspring had one genetic factor for purple flowers and one genetic factor for white flowers. But the question was why? Somehow the white trait was blocked in the second generation, right? Somehow this white trait was blocked. And so the most powerful or influential animal in a group is sometimes called dominant. In genetics, a dominant trait means nearly the same thing. A dominant trait is the most influential trait and it will mask the other trait. Mendel proposed that each pea plant had two hereditary factors for each trait. There were two possibilities for each heredity factor, such as purple flower, a purple factor or white factor. One factor is dominant to the other. The other trait is masked and is called recessive. It's called the recessive factor, meaning that when both factors are present, only the effects of the dominant factor are noticeable. And so in your own words, describe the word dominant. Mendel's conclusions. After analyzing the results from all of his experiments, he concluded that two factors controlled the each inherited trait. He also proposed that when organisms reproduce, the sperm and the egg each contribute one factor for each trait. There's a video on the right for you to watch. Slide 27, dominant and recessive traits. A genetic factor that blocks another genetic factor is called a dominant trait. A dominant trait such as purple pea flowers is seen when offspring have either one or two dominant factors or alleles. Remember we learned about alleles with letters. A genetic factor is blocked by the presence of the dominant factor. This trait is called recessive, right? So our recessive trait, such as a white pea flower, is seen only when two recessive factors are present or two recessive alleles. Remember, we uh, use one letter to uh, represent an allele. So either one specific dominant trait or one specific um, recessive trait. In the boxes below, uh, define a dominant trait and define a recessive trait. Slide 28, there is a Mendel rap song video for you to check out. Slide 29, Gregor Mendel was the father of the field of genetics, which seeks to explain how traits are passed down from one generation to the next. To study genetics, Mendel chose to work with pea plants because they have easily identifiable traits. Mendel discovered patterns through crossbreeding pea plants, which led to the discovery of our modern day knowledge of genetics. You're gonna watch the video on the right hand side and write four facts that you learned. Slide 30, 
is your mini glossary. If you want to quiz yourself and see how well you understand all of these words and their definitions, I invite you to click on where it says click here to study your words on Quizlet. So you're going to click the link and that would take you to uh, a Quizlet website with flashcards. So it's like digital flashcards if you've never used Quizlet before. And so as this loads, right, so your flashcards are going to end up in the middle right here and you can click the card and it will show the definition or the word if you click on on the arrows it'll show the next term right again click on the card to show the meaning or the word you can also use the arrows on your keyboard but anyhow you can uh check that out if you'd like finally you've got your exit ticket on slide 31. i think it's lagging here give me a second You've got your exit ticket on slide 31. And here it says to watch the videos on this slide. Do you have a dominant or recessive trait? How do you know? So watch this video and this video. Do you have a dominant or recessive trait? How do you know? And then for the next question, what did you think about the videos above? I hope you have a fantastic weekend and let me know if you have any questions.